Welcome to this DaVinci Resolve Fusion tutorial. Today we're going to be making this super simple 2D uh, particle effect interacting with uh, here it's shoes, but you can do it with anything. So let's go ahead and uh, jump in and see how we can create this. So let's go ahead and uh, disconnect all this stuff and uh, we're going to start nice and fresh. Let's go ahead and jump up here. So we've got our media and uh, what we need to do is we need to create masks around his shoes. So the easiest way to do that and the quickest way is to use magic mask. So I'm going to hit shift space at a magic mask. And for this one, we're going to uh, try to get a shoe here. So if I select we've got his shoe and I'm going to go ahead and leave this on faster. And I'm just going to track forward and see if we get a decent track on his shoe. And there we go. We've got a decent track. And to make this easier, we could add the other one in there, but since it's crossing, we might miss some stuff and I'd rather, go ahead and do these separate that way. If we need to do separate things like mask stuff out, like his leg over the top of the other leg, we can go ahead and do that. So we're going to hit F2 and we're going to name this uh, magic mask shoe, right? And uh, let's go ahead and add a new magic mask. And uh, let's get our inputs going there correctly. So let's look at this magic mask. We're going to rewind and we're going to uh, select this shoe. And let's go ahead and leave it on faster. And uh, let's track forward, see if we get a good track. And we're going to give it a nice simple playthrough to see if we got a good track. And that looks good. So we're going to go ahead and hit F2 and rename this uh, magic mask shoe left. And if you wanted to bring in multiple particle systems, one for the right shoe, one for the left shoe, you could leave them separate, but I'm going to just uh, plug them both together and I'm going to use a mat control to uh, kind of control our mat a little bit. So the next thing we need to do is go ahead and uh, add a uh, bitmap after each of these. So I'm going to add a bitmap. Copy it, paste it. So we've got a uh, two bitmaps. And the reason I do this is because it goes into a map control much easier. So let's go ahead and uh, bring these in. And if we look at our two uh, little bitmaps, we have our two mats. And the reason I do this is if I go ahead and bring in a map control. And let's say we input this straight from our uh, magic mask and this straight from our magic mask. And uh, we look and we want to combine our alphas. You can see it's kind of weird, even if we hit add or uh, no matter how we do them, it's going to have one of them a little odd. So if we just add these bitmaps after our uh, magic masks and bring those in instead, you can now see we've got a correct mask in our mat control. So as I said, on our mat control, we just want to make sure we're combining that alpha and we're adding it as the uh, combine ops. We can leave that at fast gauze in and uh, I'm going to bump this up to maybe 1.4, blur it up a little bit. And uh, let's go ahead and uh, expand this to, I don't know, 0.35 and uh, we're going to leave everything else the same. So on our Mac control, we've got our two shoes running and this is what we're going to use to drive our particle system. So what we need to do is we need to bring in a particle system. So I'm going to uh, grab this P emitter and bring that in and I'm going to grab a render and I'm going to bring that in. And on our P emitter, we can go ahead and uh, 
select our region and we're going to select bitmap. And once we do, we've got this input so we can go from our Mac control into our P emitter. So now we've got an emitter and let's go ahead and merge these together so we can uh, kind of see what's going on. And uh, we'll bring this into our render and we're going to grab a uh, merge and go from our media to our background and from our render into our foreground. So now we've got uh, both of them up there and uh, we've got our little particles. You can barely see them, but they're in there. So let's go ahead and dial these particles in so they look a little better. On our controls, we're going to go to controls and uh, on our emitter, let's go ahead and uh, we're going to bump this up to say 100 ish. We'll do a number variance of uh, 50. And we're going to do a lifespan of uh, 50 so it's not lasting too long. And let's do a lifespan variance of 20. And these are all dependent on how long your footage is. Ours is just like 94 in here. And that's why I'm using uh, 50 for our lifespan. And we're going to use our style color because we're going to create a style. And uh, we'll leave this at, uh, at the same time. If it looks a little odd, we'll go ahead and switch it to randomly. And then we're going to go to our velocity and under our velocity, let's uh, put this at say 0 0.03 to give it a little bit of movement in uh, that direction. Velocity variance, we're going to leave, we're going to leave our inherent at zero, our inherent variance at zero. And what we want to do is we want to change our angle. So our angle is going from our velocity correctly. And I happen to know if it's going this way, we're going to need like a 117.3 ish around that area. So now we've got our particles. You can barely see them moving up a little bit and we don't care about them flying back yet because we're going to use a couple other nodes to get them to move backwards. But now we've got our particles slowly raising up. So let's go ahead and work on our look. So we're going to go to style. And on our style, we're going to change this to a blob. We're not going to add any noise. Under our color controls, we're going to leave this on white. And we're going to go to our, our color over life controls. And this is where we're going to set our colors. And I'm going to leave this end white. I'm going to go about the middle-ish. And I'm going to change this to uh, like a blue. I'm going to add one more at the end. And... Uh, we're going to make this like a uh, yellowish. So now if we play, we can see we've got color and we've got blobs. We just haven't changed our size of our blobs yet. So let's go ahead and do that. So under our size controls, let's go ahead and change this to uh, two. And under our, uh, size variance we're going to put one on this we're going to leave everything else zeroed but we're going to change this size over life so we want to go from smaller to larger so we're going to change this a little smaller right here on our graph and uh, we're going to go to the end and we're going to uh, make these a little larger towards the end so now if we play you can see we've got uh, smaller blobs turning into larger blobs and it doesn't look that great yet because it's just going up, but at least we've got our emitters going. We've got our color and they are uh, coming from our shoes. And before we start adding some direction, let's, uh, let's jump into our render here. And we're gonna make a couple uh, changes to our render. So all I wanna do is I wanna blur this out a little bit. So maybe 1.2. So it's a little blurry and let's go ahead to see our particles and I'm going to add a little glow. So let's do 0.016 maybe. And that looks fine. And any other stuff we want to add, we could always add after, but uh, this is good for right now. The only other change I really want to make on our render, which we may do now, or uh, if it's getting a little slow, you don't have to do this yet. You can leave it on one subframe accuracy. 
but I'm going to go ahead and change mine to uh, four. So my subframes are a little more accurate. If I play, you can see it's playing back a little slower, but that's fine for me right now. And all that is doing is just getting our particles a little more accurate in their movement. And they look smoother as well. So to start adding movement in here, let's go ahead and add a shift space directional force or a P directional force. So we're going to add that. And on our directional force, we just kind of want it to move out a little bit. So uh, I'm going to change the strength to uh, maybe 0 0.03 because we don't want it too strong. And our direction is going the wrong way. It's uh, by default set to minus 90. We want minus 180. So now if we play, our particles are moving. And you can do this to taste, and it depends on how your film is moving or the movement of your uh, person or your subject and the direction, obviously. But I need mine to be at about 180. So there we go. And to break this up a little bit, we're going to add one more node. We're just going to uh, hit shift space, add a uh, P turbulence. And on our P turbulence, uh, we're going to go ahead and leave that X at point one. We need our Y strength to kind of break it up in the up and down direction. So uh, I'm going to change this to, uh, I don't know, 0.325. Let's see how that looks. And it's breaking it up a little more. But we can go to our strength over life. And uh, I'm going to bring this down in the beginning. And I'm going to go to our end and kind of raise it up in the end. So we get a little more strength. And I might change just a little bit. So let's see what we got now. So there we go. And like I said, you can add whatever you want after this render node to affect this. I necessarily wouldn't add shadows for the uh, particles on the ground since uh, it's a pretty overcast day in this shot. There's not a whole lot of shadows coming anyway other than right below his feet. Additionally, if you want to change this so the back particles are going behind his leg, you could always mask this out and create a mask going on his leg. And that's why I said you would do two separate particle systems, one for the right foot, one for the left foot. That way you can mask them out individually. And uh, to be able to do that, once you got your look, you could just copy all this, paste it, and uh, merge it together and just change what bitmaps are driving which particle system. So that is creating simple 2D particle systems. I will see you in the next tutorial.